Good evening and welcome to Kini News. Opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim was summoned to the Bukit Aman police headquarters today to have his statement recorded over an audio recording of what sounded like a phone call between him and AMNO President Ahmad Zaid Hamidi. As we met him outside the police station, it looks like his questioning resulted in him having even more questions. PKR President Anwar Ibrahim gave his statement to the police today in relation to an audio recording set to feature a conversation between him and AMNO President Ahmad Zaid Hamidi. Both Anwar and Zaid had previously denied that the voices heard in the conversation were theirs. Speaking to reporters after giving his statement, Anwar questioned where he was being called in when he was just a witness. He also pointed out to other more serious cases of leaked recordings that should be investigated. Ada penyebaran meluas dalam media sosial mengenai audio rakaman yang didakwa oleh Tan Sri Mahir Eddin Perdana Menteri mengenai scheme of things itu saya percaya sebagian besar sudah dengar dia melibatkan ugutan rasuah uh, kalau orang sokong, orang yang kena lantik dia lantik GLC dan sebagainya jadi saya tanya, ada siasatan kah? dan setakat yang saya di, uh, tahu Belum ada siasatan. Jadi, dia ada selalu dua darjat. Ya. Darjat pemimpin dan orang bawah. Anwar added that audio recordings were becoming more frequent. And this was a serious matter. He urged the authorities to explain how it could be done, as some of them involved top leaders in the country. And to also focus on more pressing matters such as curbing crime. Now they, they started with many others and me, and now the Minister of Home Affairs. It's a very serious thing in this country that they can get an audio recording of the Minister of Home Affairs of this in this country. Now, the police need to explain this. I don't know the special branch or what. Who can? Meanwhile, his lawyer Ram Karpal Singh stressed that Anwar was only being questioned as a witness. He said, there was no criminal element in the investigations which was under Section 505B of the Penal Code that deals with statements related to public mischief. He added that they would continue to assist the police with their investigations. Inspector General of Police Abdul Hamid Badro's contract expires next month. However, Pejuang has urged the government to retain him as the IGP and also called on them to stop political interference in the police force. Pejuang has called for Inspector General of Police Abdul Hamid Badr, whose contract expires next month, to be retained at the top post. This came following claims that the government is trying to place its favoured candidates in the police force. In a statement today, the party's legal bureau, called Pejuang Pejuang, said that political interference in the police force should not happen, and that the IGP's role and duties as the commanding officer should not be obstructed, including by politicians. The statement came following a video that had been circulated on WhatsApp, allegedly of a minister who had discussed installing his own people in the force. Pejuang said the video has yet to be verified, but considering the previous complaints by senior police officers, it is concerning that this matter has yet to be resolved. They called for proactive steps to be taken to ensure the integrity of the police, especially following the issue of cartels within the police force. They also referred to Section 15 of the Police Act 1967, which should allow the IGP to stay on. They said the section states that no police officer may retire or resign from the force during war or whilst a proclamation of emergency is in force. They added that the IGP's tenure should be protected, especially when it is the government's own choice to declare an emergency. It also urged the government to abide by the rule of law. Previously, Hamid, in an interview with Sina Haryan, had claimed that there was a cartel within the police force trying to position themselves in key posts. Hamid had also previously revealed that Home Minister Hamza Zainuddin had intervened in the transfer of senior police officers, which comes under the IGP's jurisdiction. Hamza had denied this, stating that the decision was not his, but that of the Police Force Commission. Malaysia Kini has reached out to Hamza's office about the video, and an aide said the matter was being looked at. Is the government silencing dissent? Well, according to Communications and Multimedia Minister Saifuddin Abdullah, no it's not. Since the Perikatan National Administration upholds freedom of expression. Now before we move on to the story, if you like our content, do check the link in the description to become a contributor. Communications and Multimedia Minister Saifuddin Abdullah has dismissed claims that the government is silencing dissent. In a statement today, he said the government clearly upholds the freedom of expression as enshrined in the federal constitution. 
and there had been criticisms in all sorts of forms, such as satire work and writings with critical elements against the government. Yet no action was taken all this while. He said the government accepts criticisms openly and takes notes of those related to the Rakyat's welfare and well-being. He added that freedom of expression does not mean one can express something with seditious elements that is purposely meant to incite chaos and disgrace, especially when it is insulting to the institution of the rulers, such as in some of the cases recently. He also urged the public to practice maturity and be ethical in presenting their views and opinions for the sake of society's well-being. Saifuddin's statement came following criticism from the public after the arrest of several activists recently. Last weekend, artist and activist Fami Reza was arrested for compiling a jealousy team Spotify playlist that was allegedly insulting to the Raja Permaisuri Agong Tunku Hajah Aziza Amainah Maimunah Iskandaria. Seven individuals, including activist Mukmin Nantang, were also detained on Saturday for protesting the extension of an enhanced movement control order in Tawang. In response to the arrest, PKR President Anwar Ibrahim had called on the Perikatan National Government to stop using draconian laws to silence critical views and differing opinions. Anwar had claimed that the action by the government in rolling back freedoms is clearly a desperate attempt to stop criticism and for them to cling on to power. A burger seller in the state of Kelantan was slapped with a 50,000 ringgit fine for operating his business outside of permissible trading hours, which has courted the sympathy and also the backlash from politicians who criticized the government over such a hefty fine. Several politicians have spoken up against the government over a 50,000 ringgit fine imposed on a burger seller for operating out of the permissible trading hours under the movement control order in Kelantan. They also called on the federal government to review the standard operating procedures involving small traders. Clanton Amno Youth Chief, Noor Hariri Muhammad Noor, said the authority should have considered cases like that of the burger seller, one Muhammad Faisal Wan Kadir, who had no permanent job and is about to rebuild his savings after being affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. He added that Amno lawyers would help Wan Faisal to appeal for the reduction of the fine amount imposed on him. Wan Faisal, who operates a stall in front of his house at Kampung Rambutan Rendang, Kota Baru, was issued the fine on the 25th of April. Under the MCO rules in Kelantan, eateries can only operate until 10pm. He said at the time that he was visited by the police, he was preparing orders for a group of factory workers and would deliver the orders to the factory. He told Malaysia Kini that he didn't have tables open for dining. Meanwhile, Tanjung Malib MP Chang Ling Kang also hit out at the government over the amount of the compound, calling it cruel and hypocritical. Chang said this was the kind of double standard that infuriates the people and called on the government to reduce the maximum amount of a compound from 50,000 ringgit to a reasonable amount. He also urged them to coordinate the SOP with the state governments so as not to confuse the public. Meanwhile, in response to the fine, de facto law minister Takiuddin Hassan said that the issuing of compound notices must be carried out in accordance with the guidelines set by the government. In a statement, he said that under the guidelines in determining the compound amount and discount rate under Act 342, license holders and owners of premises who fail to adhere to the operating hours for the locality would face a maximum compound of 10,000 ringgit. Takiuddin added that offenders would be given a 50% discount if they paid the compound within seven days, or 25% discount if the compound is settled within 14 days. Shellfish, red meat, and beer. If you love indulging in these foods, you may end up with high uric acid level in your blood. These foods consist high level of purin, a substance that will eventually break down into uric acid and be excreted through our urine. It is recommended that the amount of dietary purines should be kept between 600 to 1,000 mg per day. Having too much uric acid in your blood can cause attacks of gout. It can also cause kidney stones and blockage in the kidney. The crystallization of the excessive uric acid in your blood can be eased by reducing purine-rich food to only 100 to 150 mg daily maintaining a healthy lifestyle and consuming urinary alkalinizer like Ural.
It consists of sodium bicarbonate, citric acid, and sodium citrate that increases the urinary pH and solubility of uric acid to prevent crystallization. Best of all, it's lemon-flavored and sugar-free. Euron, effective urinary alkalinizer. Neutralize your uric acid problem now. After 17-year-old Ayn Husniza Saiful Nizam exposed her male teacher for allegedly making lewd jokes in class, she has had to endure all sorts of backlash, including a rape threat from a schoolmate. In an interview with Malaysia Kini, Ayn, who was accompanied by her father, shared with us on why she wanted to speak out about this issue. A lot have to, a lot have said to me, right, um, Ayn, aren't you being a bit emotional, right? You should, you could have settled this in school. Um, you are apparently muddying the school's name. Okay, so you want me to just settle in school, right? Will this ever change of how other schools work? Will it change? Will it really change how the teacher um, thinks that it's okay? I don't want this thing to be normalized. I want stricter punishment to get um, to be taken action towards that teacher so other teachers in our country know that this is not acceptable behavior i am also showing an example towards other students if, if your teacher does this and you uh, try to confide in other teachers and they say you're emo emotional and sensitive you don't let that slide go report them make sure them know that this kind of behavior is never acceptable and after this, with my movement, I hope I can um, make more students like, speak, uh, speak up. So this will never be the, the norm ever again. In the end, making our school safer. That's a wrap for Kini News this evening. For more stories, go to kinitv.com. Don't forget, we're also posting the latest headlines on our social media on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. So follow us there to get the latest news updates. Now, before we go, if you want to support independent media, do consider a subscription to malaysiakini.com. If you're heading out, don't forget your mask. And when you can, do try to stay home. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching and stay safe, Malaysia.